Hey there, dirt bike people. I'm Chuck from TrueTech, and today I'm going to be repacking and servicing this FMF turbine core silencer for my YZ250 project. So this thing's looking pretty rough. I can tell that it's been repacked before. I think the turbine core will make a good video because they are a pain to repack. Let's get to it. Now I'm using an M6, well it's a quarter inch drill bit. Basically I just need to get that thing low enough so that the, this end can slide out. What's that do? Now, the difficult part is often getting this end out, especially when it's been gooped. moving that's good now I'm running into a little bit of resistance here looks like there might even be a little bit of a dent right there I'm gonna go with my flat screwdriver here and just bend this away just a little just to open it up a little so I've been banging on this for a little while it's moving slowly it's definitely a pain Got it. Well, this can just go straight to bin. Most of the time, when guys repack turbine core silencers, they don't take out the end cap. But I'm gonna take out the end cap. Now, this screw holds that turbine core in place. This is why these things are such a pain to repack. Now we're gonna drill out these rivets. Now, same idea here. You want a drill bit that's just a little bit bigger than the shank. Now we're gonna just take a punch drop that rivet inside there. Now this part generally is surprisingly easy. So usually, I just kind of start hitting it. Oh, there we go. It's not super tight and it's usually not. If it is really tight, you can just kind of start wedging sideways. Just like that. Careful with this, don't let the drill bit slip and then stab into you. Ask me how I know. Okay, all the rivets out. Now, this turbine core can often be quite tight in there. So this is usually where I go to my wood pile. Boom, that is why I take the end out. Probably cheaper just to get a new exhaust. Look at all this crap in there. Not to mention, sometimes when you get these things apart, you break them. It's bent, okay, I'm just gonna have to bend it straight. This is really not a fun job. This fiberglass in here, it'll, man, if you're not careful, you'll be itching for days. Not to mention, if you do this with, like, say, the wire wheel or something, this fiberglass is gonna go all over the shop and in your face. And Okay, well anyway, I'm gonna scrape at this thing for a little while longer. You guys don't have to watch all of it. And I'm gonna soak it in carb cleaner to soften up some of this carbon buildup. I'm going to hit it with a wire wheel, with a wire brush. I'm going to drop in the ultrasonic cleaner for a while. Be back in a minute. All right, that was quite an adventure. I didn't record all of this. It's just, I just took some scotch Bright and just worked it. Uh, the stickers, I always take stickers off with lacquer thinner, that works really well. It's straight and it will definitely be functional. This is pretty straightforward. There's two holes here, so you gotta line them up with the two holes. You wanna be somewhat gentle here, you don't wanna get this thing all distorted. Okay, we're 
almost there. You can see the hole starting to peek out there. So I'll get one of these rivets in and then we'll start moving things around. I've got these oversized rivets here. I like to use them. I'm gonna get the holes to line up as close as possible. They're probably not gonna be perfect, but that's okay. This bottom one, I might have to do some more adjusting. Yeah, I'm gonna have to adjust it a bit. That's real close. This is a coarse thread screw right here. You can see these two are fine thread. I'm just kind of, I'm almost cutting my own threads in there. Not quite, but it's, there we go. All right, that's the core. It's not in there perfectly centered, but that doesn't really matter. It's gonna do its spinny, spark arresty thing that it's supposed to do. This perforated core is gonna end up just mating inside of that hole there. That's gonna work just fine. All right, gloves on. That's about the right length. Now I'm just gonna roll it in there. And there's lots of debate as to whether you should have it as tight as possible or have it loose and fluffy. I like putting it tighter rather than looser. You're not gonna get quite as much sound de damping or deadening, but your material is gonna last a lot longer. So I cut it a little long, and that overlap is gonna be either on the top or on the bottom, because it's obviously a little taller than it is wide. So I worked on this thing for hours. I worked on it so long, actually, that the batteries on my mic died, and I didn't even notice. I was just kind of like, in my head, I was in the zone. It, I think I probably worked on this thing for like four or five hours. It was definitely way more expensive than if I would have just bought a new silencer. That being said though, this YZ project is way over budget. So I didn't mind spending a bit of time and just and see if I could save a little bit of money on the project and waste a whole bunch of time in the process. I drilled out all the holes, oversized them a little bit, put in some heavy duty rivets, silicone the ends to keep the water out. And I must say the silencer looks really good. The sound is also a huge improvement from the stock one. The stock one was also blown out, so I would have had to fix that one too. And as soon as I put it on the bike, it was nice and quiet, and it sounds really nice. So this is what it looked like before. It looked pretty nasty. Had a lot of abuse on it, a lot of time. It was full of carbon buildup. Definitely the most expensive way to do it, but it did turn out really nice.